Hi everyone, Jordan from Entech here. In a previous episode, we introduced you to dual power injection as one method for overcoming voltage drop in LED tapes. In today's episode, we're gonna dig a little deeper and help you with some of the calculations that you'll need to design and plan for larger projects. As we learned last time, dual power injection involves sending a set of DC cables from your power supply out to the back of your pixel tape as well as the front to help boost voltage across the tape. Dual power injection helps us to run longer sections of pixel tape, but to do this, we also need to run longer lengths of cable alongside the tape. If you recall, whenever we have longer cables, we have more resistance and therefore voltage drop. If you don't have the space or the equipment to run a full scale section of tape, there are calculations that you can do during the design of your system. For today's example, we're going to be using a section of our 8P60-5-B 5V tape. In this scenario, we're going to run a continuous 5 meter strip along a wall. Because it's 5V tape, we are going to need to do a dual power injection to help with voltage drop. We're going to assume that the power supply is close enough to the start of the tape that there won't be significant voltage drop at the tape. This means we'll need to run a roughly five to six meter length of DC cables to set up our second power injection. We will need to check for voltage drop through the cable and today we're gonna to calculate that voltage drop from known information. First of all, we're gonna need a voltage drop calculator. Now, there are plenty of options online, but we'll be providing links down below for the ones that we use in this video and the ones that we recommend. Now, let's take a look at some of the parameters that we'll need to put into our voltage drop calculator. Length. This one's easy enough. We're checking for the voltage drop in the cable, so we need to enter the length of the cable from the power supply to the back of the tape where the connection is made. It's generally best to be a bit conservative here. So, instead of five meters, we'll put six meters, as a six meter length of cable will have a higher voltage drop than a five meter length of cable. Current. We have to calculate the current running through these cables using data from our tape's data sheet. The max power consumption of the 8P60-5-B is 11.5 watts per meter. Our strip is five meters long. The total power needed to run at maximum output will be divided by two, as we assume that half of the strip's power will be going to the front power injection and half through the second. This means we'll be running 28.8 watts. Now we can use the formula current, which is equal to power divided by voltage or 28.8 divided by five to calculate our current, which is just under 5.8 amps. Voltage. This is simply the voltage of the tape, which in this case is five volts, as we are using our five volt 8P60-5-B tape. Cross-section. This is the cross-sectional area of our cable, expressed in millimeters squared. This is also known as wire gauge. An AWG chart will come in handy here as it lists all the standard wire gauges and their equivalent metric cross-sectional areas. In this case, we're using 14 AWG, which has a cross-section of 2.08 millimeters squared. When we punch all the numbers in, we get a voltage drop of approximately 0.57 volts, which may not sound a whole lot, but it's a whopping 11.4% voltage drop, which way exceeds the 5% voltage variation that we recommend for our tapes. Let's go back to our voltage drop calculator and see what we can do to lower the voltage drop in our system. Length. We can reduce the length of the cable to limit voltage drop. For example, if our cable was only three meters long, the voltage drop across the cable would be only 0.28 volts. This is within our limit. However, in this example, the cable needs to be five to six meters long, since our power supplies at the start of the tape and our voltage drop needs to be at the end of the tape. This is not usually a parameter you have much control over. Current. Reducing the current will help limit voltage drop, but doing this means running our tape at a reduced brightness. Brightness is key to any LED tape's appearance, so we do not want to sacrifice being able to run at full output. Voltage. 
Using a higher voltage strip such as 12 volt tape can reduce the effects of voltage drop as 12 volts will experience a smaller percentage of voltage drop over a set distance compared to 5 volt strip. Keep in mind though that this requires you to use different tape, different power supply and it may not be an option that's suitable for you. Cross sectional area or wire gauge. Using a thicker cable can help reduce the voltage drop as we've shown in previous episodes. In cases like this, where you can't really reduce length, you don't want to sacrifice on brightness and it's not possible to upgrade to a 12 volt system, it tends to be the go-to choice for dealing with voltage drop through cables. We've been using 14 AWG in our scenario, which has proven to be not thick enough. The next size up is 13 AWG which has a metric cross-sectional area of 2.62 millimeters squared. If we put these numbers into our voltage drop calculator, we get a voltage drop of 0.45 volts. This is still too high with a voltage drop of 9%. In this scenario, we'll need to go up to 11 AWG or 4.17 millimeters squared. This will result in a voltage drop of 0.28 volts which is within the range that we'll need to be in to ensure our second power injection will be able to boost the voltage of the tape properly. We can now be confident that when we do set up our system and we use a long dual power injection and thicker 11 AWG cables for our second power injection, our tape will work properly and reliably. What we've covered today is a methodical approach to calculating voltage drop in long sections of cable. Now, the context that we've shown you today is dual power injection and a large scale project, but this will work for any project where voltage drop along the cable is a concern, and it will work in smaller home projects too. That's all for today's video. Like, share, and subscribe if you found this video useful. Comment down below if you have any questions or there's something that we missed. Don't forget to check out our social media pages and stay tuned for more helpful and tech tips.